Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on culture, consumption and desire. This lecture is a part of your paper on culture, media and society. This lecture will introduce the process of consumption through the concept of commodity fetishism and visual desire. We will discuss in detail one cultural form in India which is consumed on a daily basis that is calendar art. It gives us an idea of how sacredness of ritualistic elements gets transferred to the objects appropriating our desires to consume it. The main thrust of this lecture is to make you understand that consumption is not necessarily a private act but a social act. You will be introduced to the concept of bazaar economy and its features, which helped in building trust and business ties among the producers and the consumers. One's desire to consume and then consuming those desires reveals a linkage between culture and economy. You will learn the working of commodity fetishism, the construction of a desire to own or possess a commodity. You will know how the calendar art in India has managed our desires and linked it to the culture, commerce, nation and consumption. After this lecture, you will also be in a position to evaluate the changes in the economic transactions from bazaar economy to a consumer-oriented market society. Part 1. Commodity Fetishism – Link Between Culture, Consumption and Desire Have you ever wondered why is it that you desire to own a particular brand of clothes and not other? Why do you have a desire to consume Pepsi and not Coca-Cola? The answer does not lie with your satisfaction, rather satisfaction of your desire. This desire is something which is manufactured or created through the media along with several other factors. It makes us believe that a particular product or object can fulfill our needs. Karl Marx terms this act of attachment towards things in terms of possession as commodity fetishism. However, it should be noted that mere owning of things is not necessarily fetishism. Rather, something more goes into it like considering it to be precious, sacred, pious and more important in comparison to other objects. Such investments into an object make it appear more desirable by invoking elements of religion, national, regional, class or any other identity. If you look at this picture, we can see that it is an image or a painting. It can be considered to be a mere piece of art for those who are unaware about the Hindu religious life. However, for the believers in Hinduism, this is not a mere picture or an object. 
it represents the image of a hindu deity lord ganesha the religious aspect adds more value to this piece of art or object the desire to worship this image leads one to purchase it the sacredness attached to this object through ritual worship makes it more valuable and a fetish is attached to this project this is one of the many examples that we come across in our everyday lives where commodities acquire a special place and we add value to these commodities not necessarily in terms of its utility but as a status symbol as well such practices have led to the distinction between something called as high art and low art the former being attached to the elite class and the latter with the masses it has been argued that with the mass production of high art the aura around the high art has tended to diminish for example the well known painting of mona lisa by leonardo da vinci was copied to such an extreme through photography and other printing technologies that now it becomes difficult to distinguish between the original painting and the reproduced ones commodity fetishism makes a product highly elusive or mysterious and the consumer becomes extra possessive about it in the following parts we will deal exclusively with one of the art forms in india that is calendar art it will give us a clear idea of how commodity fetishism works towards a management of our desires through consumption recap part 1 Before we exclusively study the phenomenon of calendar art let us revise what we learnt in this part first we learnt the concept of commodity fetishism and how it explains our attachment towards things in terms of possession however it should be noted that mere owning of technologies is not necessarily fetishism rather something more goes into it like considering it to be precious sacred pious and more important in comparison to other objects such investments into an object make it appear more desirable by invoking elements of religion national regional or any other identity part 2 calendar art and bazaar economy desires of consumption in this part we will discuss what calendar art is and how it created a kind of visual desire and consumption within the bazaar economy this will give us a clear picture of how images of gods get commodified and help in the sustenance of the informal economic sector Kajri Jain in her study on calendar art and ethos of the bazaar found that pictures circulate as objects when they are represented in calendars the pictures are chosen from a variety of designs with combination of different themes there might be hindu gods babies national leaders film stars natural scenery animals and so on this kind of visual representation through assortment of themes in the calendar is known as calendar art or bazaar art
the circulation of these pictures of gods and goddesses create a sense of belongingness among those who consume it. In India, the first calendar come advertisement originated in the early 1930s by the makers of Woodward's gripe water meant for children. It featured a Krishna-like child and the bottle of gripe water. Such calendars were sent by companies to their business associates and favoured customers to strengthen their bonds. The calendar art has the potential to evoke feelings of devotion and as such act as mediator between deity and devotee. Now, the question arises, how is this visual desire created by the producers of these calendars? Kajri Jain gives example of the main temple of Pushti Marg, which spreads the message of Krishna cult across northern and western India. The temple has a community of painters attached to it, who initially were associated with devotional painting but later on moved to commercial calendar work. The merchants, who were the followers of the Krishna cult, invested in the indigenous culture industry. They were engaged in visual forms of print capitalism, spreading anti-colonial nationalist images through use of Hindu deities and other visual stories. Thus, in the first place, we found that Pushti Marg encourages the desire of its devotees to the worship of Krishna through images. Secondly, the preaching of Pushti Marg to divert one's desire from worldly things towards gods also aids in this process. The main emphasis is not to suppress the desire but to channel it in the direction of God. Thirdly, the rituals of the temple where idols of the God is bathed, worshipped and given food like a human being, it becomes a site of libidinal investment which is sufficient to inspire effect among the devotees. In contrast to the Euro-American Borges society where fetishistic desire is considered to be a threat to its integrity, Kajri Jain argues that the Hindu society is characterized by the ethos of the bazaar which reinforces and maintains the Hindu societies. The ethos of the bazaar, Jain asserts, primarily consists of exchange of gifts and commodities to maintain reciprocal flows. It generates a value in itself through an emotional attachment to the sacred and is maintained through repetition of ritual worship by the priests and devotees. Seeing the deities or taking darshan mediates the collective desire of the devotees to the sacred deity. Such values associated with deities also extend to other iconic figures like freedom fighters, national heroes and even film stars. Through calendar art, a community of devotees is constituted through the performativity of the marketplace. In short, the articulation of the sacred, commercial and libidinal economies is called as ethos of the bazaar.
रिकैप ऑफ पार्ट टू देर फोर इन दिस पार्ट वी लर्न वॉट कैलेंडर आर्ट इज एंड हाउ इट क्रिएटेड अ काइंड ऑफ विजुअल डिजायर एंड कंजम्पन विद इन द बाजार इकोनॉमी Based on Kajri Jain's study on calendar art and ethos of the bazaar, we learnt about the commodification of Hindu gods, babies, national leaders, film stars, natural scenery, etc. through their visual representation on calendars. We learnt about the ethos of the bazaar which characterizes the Hindu society. Jain asserts that the ethos of bazaar primarily consists of exchange of gifts and commodities to maintain reciprocal flows basically the articulation of the sacred commercial and libidinal economies is called as ethos of the bazaar part 3 bazaar economy and its features Now let us discuss what is a bazaar economy and its features. One's desire to consume products also needs to be seen in relation to culture and economy. If we take the example of Indian economy in the earlier days there was a kind of informality that characterized it. such informal economy is what kajri jain 2010 calls as the bazaar economy it relied more on informal transactions where trust was the major facilitator for business transactions and the trust was reinforced through two factors one credit worthiness of the merchant Two, annual ritual of gifting calendars, especially having images of Hindu deities, religious symbols, freedom fighters, or any other religion motif. Bazaar primarily consisted of the Indian mercantile trade, banking, and credit networks. and was dominated by the baniyas and marwadi communities who served as the middlemen translators and a highly upwardly mobile class their major function was to forge ties with foreign traders industrialists markets and rural producers they diverted a few amount of the profit towards manufacturing vernacular cultural goods like calendars and magazines thus some of the features of this informal economy driven by trust relations are three features of the bazaar economy a informal relations trading was within the family and community networks so that circulation of credit goods and wealth remained within the confines of these networks it is the nature of social relation that determines the business transactions such informality distinguished the bazaar from the official colonial economy b commerce and religion There is incorporation of religion in commerce where images of Hindu deities were used to advertise goods aimed at the Indian consumers. The practice of gifting calendars with images of deities on them to the business associates and customers reinforced the bazaar's social commercial networks. C dominant subaltern continuum The merchants trading communities of bazaar economy asserted their hegemony as they were the major picture publishing industry. 
However, in comparison with the elite culture, it addressed to a marginalized subaltern population which catered to the anti-colonial movement. Part 4 Consuming Desires Mass Reproduction of Calendar Art in Bazaar Economy The calendar art in bazaar economy became memorable in circulated beyond territorial and symbolic control of temples and courts. There were mass reproduction of the images for commercial purposes. They were used and made available in various projects of identity formation in modern India. Project of sect, caste, language, religion and nation. The origin of the desire for mass reproduction of calendar art can be traced to Bhakti movement in India. The Bhakti movement emphasized on devotion. It was seen as an alternative to priestly interventions with the divine. The cultural forms like poetry, dance and songs became the medium to interact with the God. The ultimate aim was to have a personalized worship of the divine through mass production of the clay statues, wall paintings of the divine form made available at pilgrimage sites. It should be noted that the print of Hindu deities, religious symbols on these calendars and their mass reproduction creates a link between the sacred commerce, modernity and nation. We will discuss each of these aspects in the following subsections. One, consuming the sacred. The sacredness of the deities is transferred into the objects like calendars, statues, paintings, art piece, etc. In case of calendar art, printing technology is used to communicate the notion of sacred to the customers. For example, Kajri Jain found in her study that these calendars depicting the religious icons attain a certain ritual status in the households. People put vermilion on these images and burn incense sticks in front of these pictures as a part of their daily worship. Two, commerce and consumption. Calendar art presents an interesting case of blurring the distinction between Drakenhemian's notion of sacred and profane. The calendar art depicts an uncomfortable intimacy between commerce and religion. These commercially produced images become sacred and not only within the home but also make their presence felt in the consumption and exchange of commodities. For example, such images are used on packaging of products like cigarettes, fireworks, hair oil, matchbox, rice, tonics and many such other consumable items. You can also find images of different religions just above the cash receipt counter in the shops which is considered to bring wealth and prosperity in the business. Similarly, the calendars are sold as commodities in the bazaar. They are given as gifts to strengthen the business ties and other kinds of personal and professional networks and relationships. Three, 
consumption and desire for modernity. Calendar art was also a step to endorse that the country is progressing towards modernity. It went beyond the oriental distinction between a materialistic West and spiritualistic East and represented a coexistence of both the aspects. For example, Kajri Jain found in her study that the Western Indian chemical company included Dattareya, a Hindu deity, along with images of women as mothers and doctors in its calendar frame. This indicates how both tradition and modernity are represented together in the calendar art to convey the message that the country is progressing. Consumption and Nation The second half of the 19th century witnessed the articulation of Indian cultural identity in the domain of image reproduction. The image of Mother India or Bharat Mata is an example to demonstrate the importance of nation through painting. Raja Ravi Varma (1848–1906) was an artist from Kerala who gained popularity through his reinterpretation of the epic narratives like Ramayana, Mahabharata, and Puranas in his paintings. His expression of Indianness reflected in his oil paintings, which included emotions, bhav, an essential component of Indian aesthetics. His paintings contributed towards making the Indian public both as a political, cultural entity and a pan in, in Kajuba. With the introduction of offset presses in 1970s, Sivakasi fireworks industry in Tamil Nadu started producing pan-national calendars. Through an extensive network of publishers, business leaders, consumers, it catered to the specific orders in terms of themes required by clients of all religions. It thus contributed to the consumption of national identity through printing of calendars. Recap In this section, we learnt about the expansion of the bazaar economy of calendar art to mass reproduction of the images for commercial purposes. They were used and made available in various projects of identity formation in modern India, project of sect, caste, language, region and nation. We traced its origin to the Bhakti movement and the ultimate aim of the movement was to have a personalized worship of the divine through mass production of clay statues, wall paintings of the divine form made available at the pilgrimage sites. And finally, we addressed the link between mass consumption and the sacred, commerce, modernity and nation. Part 5 Culture, Consumption and Desire in Post-Reforms Era Post-1991 Witnessed an era of liberalization in the modern economy. Market reforms provided opportunities for economic and social mobility for the merchant and community of bazaar economy to do business collaboration with multinational companies. In this scenario, 
gifting of calendar was no longer considered appropriate to conduct business with the multinational companies. The calendar art did not disappear, but there was a bifurcation of its production, one of the overseas market and the other for the domestic market. Culture in the post-reform era has distanced itself from the ethos of the bazaar. The metropolitan model of the multiculturalism is followed where religion has come to be incorporated in an arena of leisure and consumption rather than work and economy. Conclusion Now, after summing up this lecture, we hope that you have understood that our personal desire to consume has a social dimension built within it. We tend to give importance to an object as we develop a kind of fetish towards it, and it acquires the character of the sacred which creates a desire to possess it. We found that calendar art industry in India used commodity fetishism in order to further commercial interests. Calendar is merely an object but it attains sacredness due to the images represented through it, be it deities, national leaders, religious symbols or any other icon of considerable significance. Though calendar art propelled during the bazaar economy, it has not disappeared altogether in an era of globalization. The market has diversified and has led us to channel our desires towards consumption of commodities through various other techniques of reification. For more details, please read the e-text of this lecture properly and attempt the questions in the end. Thank you.